Apple's spring loaded event has come and gone within this last week. We've had time to process the new developments, the new hardware, and most notably iOS 14.5. We're gonna see that sometime next week. We're excited. I'm Beth Motter here with Jason Cipriani. Jason, I think the the most important thing we need to talk about with iOS 14.5 is the new security enhancements. What What's going on? Tell us about it. Yeah, so 14.5 has been in the works for quite a while. We've actually had it in beta since late February or early February. This has been a pretty lengthy beta for just a normal release. And one of the reasons is because of Apple's new app tracking transparency feature, which is also commonly called ATT. Now, this feature was first announced and supposed to roll out with iOS 14 last fall, but Apple kept delaying it. And the reason it was delayed, and there's been such uh, back and forth between Facebook and Apple directly, is because it's a, it's a privacy feature that requires apps that are listed in the App Store to expressly request permission from users of those apps to allow them to track the user between other apps and online. So for example, Facebook, which makes all of its money from ads, and it gets those ads, those targeted ads by tracking users across apps and the web, will now have to ask someone once the update goes live, will now have to ask you, do you wanna be tracked or do you not wanna be tracked? And you can okay. tell the app, nope, don't track me. And they are not allowed to track you across your Apple devices that you've opted out on, which, obviously is gonna have a big impact on their bottom line if they're not able to collect that data. Now it doesn't apply to all the devices you own, just Apple devices. And so there's a, some wiggle room there and a ways for them to still track you and make money, but this is gonna put a big hurt on Facebook and Google and maybe even Amazon as well. It's massive because A, uh, this is presumably leading, kind of, it's, it's making that pathway for other carriers and other devices to do this, but. B, if I have an Android and I'm very concerned about my security and my privacy and I'm someone who uses Facebook a lot, uh, for example, I'm probably going to switch to an Apple device um, to have that privacy setting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I told someone this morning that I will not allow a single app to request me for eternity or to follow me around. I will deny the request every single time. Absolutely. I, there is zero reason for any app to collect information on me. I don't care about personalized ads. I'll search for what I want to buy online and, and do my own research. Don't track me. And this is a huge feature that, like you said, lays the groundwork for people to switch. But also we've seen Google with Android start to get more privacy serious. And in the last couple of years, they've started to adopt the features that Apple has put in iOS. So who knows, maybe a year from now, I doubt Google will go this far, but we'll see something similar. Oh yeah, S similar for sure. But I, I also think uh, once this rolls out, it'll be really interesting to see, um, maybe not interesting, concerning, scary, uh, to see how many apps have been tracking me who, that I just haven't known. Yeah, Apple has set a deadline of April 26 for developers going forward. Any app updates they submit will have to conform to this new transparency policy. And so you may not see a lot of prompts on day one, but as apps update, the next update, they're supposedly required to follow this protocol. So it's going to be probably a month of really learning who's been tracking you. And honestly, don't be surprised if it's almost every single app on your device. It just, that's the way a lot of apps make money is selling that information to someone else who then puts it in an advertising market or for their own ads directly. And so, yeah, it's it's gonna be eye-opening. Wow, yeah. Um, whew, I don't know if I wanna know all of the apps. You know, I, I, ah, I don't know. Um, okay, so. So we're gonna find out what apps are tracking us and we're, we're gonna to get to either accept or deny. What else did iOS 14.5, what's it rolling out? So another big one that I think people are going to really love, and this has nothing to do with privacy, is the fact that you can now, if you have a Face ID equipped iPhone, you can now unlock your iPhone using facial recognition when you're wearing a face mask with one exception. You have to have an Apple Watch. And so the new method is, you enable it and you know, your pass, passcode and face ID settings is allow unlock with Apple Watch. And so when you hold up your phone and it detects you're wearing a face mask, if your watch is close enough, it'll automatically 
unlock your iPhone. And so this really eliminates that problem. All of us have been wearing masks over the last year. You go to unlock your iPhone while you're wearing a mask and you have to enter your pin code, which is incredibly frustrating. This has also been in the beta since early February. And I immediately installed it because of that feature. And it's seamless. It works great. If you have a Mac and you've set up auto unlock on your Mac with your Apple Watch, it works exactly the same way. You get a little tap on your wrist when your iPhone unlocks to let you know that, hey, the watch was used to unlock it. There's even a button that pops up on your watch. So you could lock your phone. Let's say if someone near you picked up your phone and it mistakenly identified them and unlocked, you can lock your phone remotely. So there's some privacy features or security features built into it there. I think people are gonna love this, even though we're nearing the end of the pandemic and some states have list, lifted the mask requirements. I still see a lot of people wearing masks when I go out and I think this is really gonna streamline that process for them. Oh yeah, people are still wearing them and I, you know, on, on Twitter and Instagram, I keep seeing more and more people saying, hey, you know, I caught less colds this year. Um, I'm probably gonna continue wearing my mask. Like that stigma has been changed. So having that, not only for the COVID-19 pandemic that we've all been pace facing for the last year, uh, just moving forward, I think is gonna be really beneficial for Apple users. Yeah, absolutely. And I wish one thing I wish they would do with this feature is extend it to apps. Like, let's say you unlock your phone and you want to get it in your password manager. It still doesn't work for that feature. It is strictly for unlocking your phone. It doesn't work for Apple Pay either. Although using your Apple Watch to make a payment is a lot easier than unlocking your phone and doing all of that. So I think maybe that's the approach they're hoping users take. But overall, it, it's a great step forward. I wish we would have had it a year ago, though. Oh, absolutely. It's so frustrating looking down at your phone and oh, I've got my mask on. I've got to remember my pin. What's my pin? Or you pull Try your mask down and then or pull your mask down and then everybody's glaring at you in the grocery store. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Just unlock your phone. Really? Yep. Absolutely. So is in anything else in iOS 14.5 that we should know about? Um, lots of updates, I'm sure. There are plenty of updates, probably more than we have time to cover. Another big one, though, worth covering is the new Siri voices. For the first time, iOS 14.5 will not default to a female Siri voice. When you set up a new device as of 14.5, you will be prompted to pick between the four voices that are there now. There are two new voices. They've really diversified the way the voices sound. And it's only for English-speaking countries right now. Uh, but you, so you get these four choices, you can go through and listen to them and pick the one you want. I'm currently on team voice number three. I think it's a great voice. Uh, but once you download it and select that voice, it actually syncs across the rest of your Apple devices, which kind of surprised me. I expected it just to be on my iPhone. And a few hours later after I said it, I talked to my Apple watch and it talked back to me in that same voice. So I think it was a nice touch to be able to sync it across. Uh, other uh, changes in iOS 14.5, the music app and podcast app have some small tweaks to it. Podcasts arguably the bigger of the two with the new podcast subscription service rolling out that Apple announced at the Spring Loaded event. Instead of subscribing to podcasts now, which has been the terminology since day one of Apple Podcasts, you now follow podcasts. And if you pay to subscribe to a podcast, which I don't think there are any podcast subscriptions available yet, that's where the subscribe naming scheme comes into play now. So there's little tweaks like that you'll see throughout the operating system, but app tracking transparency, the new face ID with Apple Watch stuff and the Siri voices, those are like the three highlights of what's new in iOS 14.5. Oh yeah, I, I'm sure we don't have time to go through every single update that is with iOS 14.5, but notably some really cool ones. I'm really excited to see, uh, and like I said, maybe a little bit scared to see what apps have been tracking me as they roll out over this next month. Um, Jason Cipriani, thank you so much for breaking this down for us. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as iOS 14.5 rolls out, why don't you go ahead and leave us a comment to tell us what your favorite feature is, maybe your least favorite feature, or maybe what you want Apple to release coming in the future since these updates are always rolling out. So for ZDNet and for all things tech, be sure to stick with us. Thanks for watching.